Our Sunday School lesson this week takes a look at Jesus praying in the garden. In our lesson this week, our lesson, it picks up right after the Feast of Passover, where Jesus, he sat down with his disciples and he took bread, he broke bread, he blessed the bread. He also took the cup that was filled with the fruit of the vine, and he also told the disciples what both of those things represented. Of course, we know that Jesus, he was betrayed at the Feast of Passover by Judas Iscariot, which also plays a role in our Sunday School lesson this week. Now, after the Feast of Passover, we're told in scripture that Jesus, he took his disciples and they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And there in the garden, we are told that he took with him Peter and the sons, the two sons of Zebedee, which we know is James and John. Now, I dive deeper into Jesus bringing those three with him as he went into the garden to pray in my fuller commentary of this Sunday School lesson that you can find at Newfound Faith org where you can read the full commentary and you can listen to the full audio of the commentary if you want to dive deeper into our Sunday School lesson this week. So I certainly encourage you to go in to do that. We discuss that and not only do we discuss that, but we also discuss the arrest of Jesus there in the garden in a great deal of detail as well. So again, if you want to dive deeper into our Sunday School lesson this week, head over to newfoundfaith.org and read the full commentary or listen to the audio of the full commentary as well. Now, when we get into the prayer of Jesus, we will see here in scripture today that Jesus, he prays to the Father, which this again, something that we have spoken about in recent weeks, it looks at the Godhead, which we know again, the Godhead is the Father, it is the Son, and it is the Holy Spirit as well. So there are a lot of people who question, how can God pray to God? Well, we have the Son praying to the Father here. And we'll see that the son in our scripture today was in a great deal of distress. We'll see the son say there to the father in the 39th verse, he says, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So what is this cup that Jesus is praying about? Why is he asking the father there to take this cup away from me? Let us think about that for a moment, right? What do we do with cups? Well, cups are filled with something to drink and we drink whatever is in the cup. The cup that Jesus, he is speaking about, it is filled with a drink that is sour. It is filled with a drink that is bitter. I'm not talking about wine. I'm talking about what was to come for Jesus. What was about to happen to Jesus after he prayed in the garden? Well, I've already given the hint away he is going to be arrested. He is going to be betrayed by Judas Iscariot and he's going to be turned over into the hands of the religious leaders who would then turn him over to Pontius Pilate. And then after these things, Jesus will be given up. The crowd, they would choose Barabbas over him. And Jesus, he would then be whipped. He would be beaten. He would be chastised. He would be made to take his cross through the streets of Jerusalem and carry it up to Golgotha or Calvary's Hill, where he will be crucified on the cross and then he would die for all of us. This cup that Jesus was about to drink from, again, it was sour and it was bitter. And what I love about this 39th verse, it is something that I have spoken about in recent weeks as well, is that we see the humanity of Jesus here. Yes, we know that Jesus is God manifested in the world. We know that Jesus is God in the flesh. We know that Jesus is the only begotten son of God, which again makes him holy. It makes him divine. He is righteous. But again, we see the humanity of Jesus. He's living in the flesh. And we often say that Jesus, he understands, he knows what we go through. And in this situation, we see a distressed Jesus where he is praying to his father, Lord, take this away from me. I don't know if I can handle this. You know, we have those moments where we are going through some things that is very difficult for us to bear. And what do we do in those moments? We pray. That's what we genuine believers do. And we pray to the Lord, this is too heavy for me to bear. Take this away from me. Help me out. And that is what we see Jesus doing here in this verse where he again, he's asking the father for help. But then we see there where Jesus being distressed about the cup that he's about to drink from, 
he commits to the Father's will. That is what our Sunday School lesson is titled today. He says again there in that verse, he says, not as I will, but as you will. He is committed. Thankfully, thank God that Jesus was committed. He committed himself to carrying that cross for us. He committed himself for dying for us. We know that again, Jesus, he became our propitiation, which means that Jesus, he became our atonement offering to atone for all of our sins. Okay. So as we again see Jesus praying there in the garden, we'll see that when he finished praying the first time around that he went out to the disciples, he went out to Peter, John, and James, and he found them asleep as he went out. And we'll see him say there in the 40th verse, he says, what, could you not watch with me one hour? And then he said, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Which again, Jesus could certainly say to them, because again, he's able to sympathize with us in that moment. His spirit was willing, but his flesh was weak. He desired to carry out the father's will, but again, we see Jesus in his humanity, just like us when we are dealing with something that is too difficult for us to handle. There are a lot of times where we're ready to give up, where we're ready to turn around and to, to go back. And again, that's a lesson for all of us as believers. The journey of faith, it is a difficult one. There are a lot of people who start out on the journey of faith that give up. They turn around and they go back to their old ways. Whereas we who are genuine of faith, we are committed. We are committed to living in the way of God. And in that commitment, in the difficulties that we face in our life, all of the afflictions and the affirmities that we deal with, all the hardships and the burdens that we have to bear, we pray to the Lord to, again, be with us, to help us in whatever it is that we are going through. And that's exactly what we see Jesus doing here in our lesson today. After he went out to the disciples and he went to check up on them, he then, Jesus, went back into the garden and we are told in scripture that he prayed again a second time. And we're told there in the 44th verse that Jesus, he prayed again the third time. So Jesus in the garden, he prayed once, he prayed twice, he prayed three times which it shows us how distressed Jesus was in his spirit about drinking from the cup, about the upcoming death that he was about to go through. This was something that was weighing on Jesus. This shows you again that this was not something that was easy for Jesus to carry out. A lot of times we like to make it out like this was something that was easy for Jesus to do. But again, we see the humanity here. Nobody wants to die. And Jesus, he did not want to die in this instance. So he had to commit himself. He had to go and he had to pray to the father, not once, not twice, but three times about drinking from the cup, about carrying out, committing himself to the father's will. So there are a lot of times where we feel ashamed of having to pray to God. And I have been spoken to several times by people who say, they don't like to pray to God over and over again about the same thing because they feel embarrassed about doing it. But again, don't ever feel embarrassed about uh, praying to the Lord about something over and over and over again. It shows if you're distressed, it shows that you know that you're turning to the Lord and that he can help you out. And again, if you are in great need, that's what the persistent widow did. We have to be persistent in our prayer life. We have to be diligent in our prayer life. We ought not ever feel ashamed or afraid in going to the Lord in prayer. Again, as we see in our scripture today, Jesus, he was greatly distressed and he was not afraid. He was not ashamed in going to the father there. Again, just taking a little look there at scripture there, where after the third time Jesus went out into uh, the disciples, after he finished praying there, we we're told that he went to the disciples and he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? He said, behold, the hour is at hand and the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. The, the disciples, they were taken, at least these three again, Peter, John, and James, they were taken with Jesus to keep watch as Jesus went deeper into the garden to pray to the father. And the idea of the disciples going to sleep here, 
we can think about that physically for a moment because they were probably tired and they, you know, they just drifted off to sleep because Jesus, he was in such deep prayer in the garden. And when he went out the first time and then the second time he saw them asleep and then the third time they were still asleep. But that puts me in mind of us today that again, we are disciples of Jesus. We are followers of Christ. And something that Jesus has told us about this day is that we should watch and that we should wait. In this day, in this world that we live in, where we are surrounded by sin, we are waiting for something to happen. What are we waiting for? Well, we're waiting for Christ to come back and to rapture the church out. We're waiting to be raptured out, called up to Christ, where we will put on our glorified bodies, which is something that I spoke about in a recent Bible study as well, that the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. If you haven't gone and listened to that study or watched that study, be sure to do so. You can do so here on YouTube or again, you can go over to newfoundfaith.org. We are supposed to be watching and we're supposed to be waiting for Christ. We should not fall asleep because something that Jesus said is that when he comes, it's going to be like a thief in the night. We're not going to know when he comes. The last thing that we should be doing is falling asleep on Jesus possibly coming. And when I say falling asleep there, I'm not talking about physically sleeping. Of course, we're all going to get tired physically and we're all going to have to fall asleep at some point. But we ought not fall asleep spiritually speaking. We are to always be diligent in our faith, never turning back for one moment in our faith. Let us be diligent in our faith. Let us be diligent in our fellowship with the Lord. Let us be diligent in our studies. Let us be diligent in our prayer life. Because again, those things help us as we go along the way. Again, Jesus was looking for help. He was looking for strength and he found that when he prayed to his father. We find that all the time when we go to the Lord in prayer. There has never been one occasion where I have prayed to the Lord and I came away from my prayer feeling worse than I did when I entered into prayer. So again, let us be diligent in our faith. Let us be diligent in our studies. Let us be diligent in our prayer life because doing that will help us along the way as we are making our way to the kingdom of God. Again, as we see here in our Sunday school lesson today, it certainly helped Jesus. And if prayer can help Jesus, it can most certainly help all of us. Okay. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson today. What did we learn? Well, we learned today that even Jesus prayed. And if it's good for Jesus to pray, we also learned that it is good for us to pray as well. The third thing that I would say that we learned today is that we ought not be ashamed in going to God in prayer. We shouldn't be fearful in going to God in prayer. Because again, when we go to God in prayer, we have learned as well that it will renew our strength. It will renew our faith. And again, we will make it. All right. So that is, again, our Sunday School lesson for today. I hope that you enjoyed our Sunday School lesson today, and I hope that you'll share it with someone somewhere as well. And again, I hope all of you, as you leave this lesson, will continue about being diligent in your prayer life. Let us pray for all of those around us, those that we know, those that we don't know. You never know what kind of shape someone is in. You never know who is in need of help. So let us be prayerful for all people. And again, let us go about in grace and in love. That is our calling as a child of God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday school lesson next week. It'll be Palm Sunday and we'll have a Palm Sunday Sunday school lesson next week where we'll be looking at the crucifixion of our Savior. So again, I will continue to do all of those things for you. I will continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers. And I pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.